Michael, thanks for coming. We're super excited to have you at Cyark. Um, we were just talking about some photographers you've been using. To I Photoshop or not to Photoshop? Yeah, to Photoshop or not to Photoshop. Um, you and do I was correct. saying sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Yep. But it's we really like rely on the photographer. Like we try not to touch the photos ourselves. Honestly, we like work with. This is really not that interesting for probably students or whoever's. We're going to have to start off with the editing. But like the, um, but we'll just talk and something good will be come out of it hopefully. But like the um, the so we will. You know, we tend to do less ourselves. Like we don't photograph our own projects unless it's like construction photos. We work with real photographers, like we do with graphic designers, or we do with engineers. I don't know, or others. You know, we try to work with experts in their fields. I don't really believe in trying to do it all ourselves. What about anymore. the stuff in your office when you photograph models? And you take videos. Yeah, we do that films. stuff ourselves. That's true. We do that. We have a kind of technique set of techniques down. And I would say, yeah, that's true. I guess so. That's true. They're, somehow those are different. Those are like kind of drawings for us or something. They're like, they're um, they're internal representations. They're not like I think photographs of of built work are kind of like somehow not our documents. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. But is it like to get a more objective lens? Or? Yeah, some, it's like somehow not, doesn't operate in the same way, I guess. I mean, we're there on site and we're like, what about that? Or what about this? Or isn't that, oh, hey, that's a shot there or something. You know what I mean? Like we look at it, we try to look at it with fresh eyes or something when you photograph. It's different than doing, the, the models are much more, you know, we always are like, we have a kind of technique and we always try to make it look like like a really flat dead pan. Um, we do try to also do eye level, for the most part. We always try to shoot it like we always say. It's, we always try to shoot sort of at night or the morning or night. It's sort of at the edge of, of uh, like where the architecture is sort of disappearing or coming into focus. We don't know. Is it because you're trying to get like a kind of rendered effect or some sort of um, um, soft think... air to the? To the shot? I think those sh we started doing those more with the real photos, okay. actually, somehow, and then brought them in. We liked the idea of. Not, I mean, at one point, honestly, at one point, we were just like trying to do the. The, um, I, I think we're kind of contrarians constantly to some degree. So you have to imagine at the time when we started doing that, it's like everything is super white. You know, it's sort of like everything looks like a V-ray renderings, including mm -hmm. photographs. And we were like, let's go. I remember in the office, we were like, you know, I love Elon great photographer, but we were like, let's do the anti bond. Let's try to go Caravaggio or something. Let's go like dark, you know, like really dark and rich and it, like try to bring, make it feel like it's at night instead of like mm -hmm. in, in like a full super white render. When you photograph or film the models, it feels kind of mysterious. Is that part of it? It's, it I feels like night it's... night is more mysterious than night, day. Night, and know. then you add text to the stuff, like... Yeah, we add text. There's to always it. somebody, like, talking or fighting, or maybe they're not fighting. Are they yeah. fighting? The stories are different. I mean, in a way, they exist. Um, I always thought... I always have, I always believe there's a kind of disconnect. I mean, I have a kind of, it's kind of how architecture works. So, like, let's say you have th something, a form, a building, and then you have this other thing, this narrative, this meaning, this text that we overlay on these things. And to me, that's architecture. So the magic trick of architecture is always to sort of make it s speak or make it seem intelligent, make the stupid thing seem smart. And like, um, so the texts operate in a way autonomous, but they're connected somehow to the object still. So Does what's the sense? relationship between the scale figure and the environment, I guess? Because it seems to me like you're working on both at the same time. I think a lot of the work is always, I mean, we're very conscious of, let's say, representation. Sure. So the scale figure for us was, I mean, the, there's plenty of ways. I mean, there's like a really 
much more provincial answers to things too, in a certain sense, much more localized in, in a way like the scale figure. Um, one is we, we just notice that everybody sort of has scale figures, like almost like, like that's part of the architectural identity nowadays is like, who, what are your scale figures? And so we were kind of interested in that and we were asked by Mark uh, Wigley and Beatrice Colomina to take part in their human, like uh, Are We Human show at the Biennale. And so, you know, we just said we would want to do work on scale figures as, I mean, just like out of the blue, like it's just kind of like an off the cuff remark. And then the, and then we spent like way too much time with a group of students like going through libraries and archives and trying to just cut and just collecting drawings and cutting out scale figures, you know, in Photoshop cutting out um, and collecting in a mat and like in almost uh, indiscriminately. I mean, it was basically like, just let's get as much as we can. Like take every book from the library. Yeah, like just go crazy. And just Yeah, it was just, it was, a, it was a, a show of force. Like we just like get like a group of students just go in and like collect whatever we can. It's a kind of amazing, um, also amazing way to approach history. They really looked mm. at all drawings and like we're cutting them up and everything. So, um, and then we made a kind of book of it. And you can, it was the, I guess the premise of it in a way is that if by looking at the drawings or representation itself is that you can somehow, it reveals something about the architecture. Even if it's things like, you know, pencil drawing versus a photo montage versus rendered people versus whatever, something else. You can, it says something in the medium shifts in the field, uh, the characters themselves, like, you know, Bobardi drawing like sort of a cocktail scene says something, even the care in drawing is something different versus like, um, I think it's been a kind of recent trend also where you see a lot of times the architects putting themselves in their own renders. Like Bjorka Ingels seems somehow is like everywhere in his own renderings. And same with other offices too, like they'll use themselves as scale figures and part of that is the technological thing you can do it. Part of it is maybe a, a thing about constructing a brand or identity. Um, and also, you know, you find like, yeah, Anders Hake will do like a transgender, you know, there's a political statement with, mm -hmm. with scale figures as well. Very much like a country club. It's also saying something about the clients or who you're trying to get projects from. So I, we thought it was, it's like one of these things that I'm not sure how, I don't know how, what kind of influence it really has on architecture. It's more like, it's a kind of way to just kind of, you know, we're all looking at this, these drawings all the time and just saying, kind of look, pointing at something that's kind of seems like nobody's paying attention to and trying to, to think about it a little bit. The movies are like that too. They're ways for us to think about architecture. They're not really, the narratives like you were saying are, um, let's say romance of systems. It's like, uh, you know, it's like a, a architecture couple it's somehow Hillary and myself, but it's not, you know, it sort of plays with like the real and fic fiction in fact. And it's sort of a story, it's about you know, Frank and Alice. And Frank, Frank, you know, they're like, Frank's a formalist and Alice is, it also plays with gender stereotypes, sort of Frank's like a macho formalist and Alice is kind of interested in environment and performance and other things, you know, things like this. So it plays in a way with these things and kind of messes them up, hopefully. I mean, in, in a way, they're kind of personal and not at the same time. There should be disciplinary, but they're also, we're, we're just thinking through things, I don't know. Is that, I mean, you build these big models, are they, yeah. are you trying to figure stuff out through them or they become also stage sets for these? There's, um, they're films? both, I mean, they come, Sometimes they happen before, sometimes they happen during, and sometimes they happen after. I'm thinking in particular of the very large model of the orphanage. Yeah, that happens in the, that's in the middle, sort of, in a way. But um, yeah, that for sure is just, I mean, we like big models. I, in a way, I don't know where that, that, I would say, if anything, that really Hillary's insistent, insists always on like large models in the office. Hmm. and. Um, they're great to, to really study things. 
Yeah. And they're always at half inch, she goes a foot. That's ours. All we have of them. Like, they're all the they're same all scale. They're all the same, same scale. So it's kind of fun to see. Um, I actually think the orphanage's maybe model isn't that, that scale. But like the, the houses for sure are, and some of the other buildings. So it's like we, have, we can put them all next to each other. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Moss Village. Yeah, and you also can see like, oh, that building's bigger than I thought it was or something. Hmm. Somehow. Yeah. I, I mean, I wonder about this because the, uh, we started kind of talking a little bit about <laughs> you used and you said, yeah. you know, we like to hire experts. But in some ways, um, maybe some of the representational techniques you've developed have to do so much with photography and stage sets and lighting. Yeah, and, that's true. In and a way, in I would some say way, that's influence. your expertise. At, yeah, I mean, it is an expertise to some degree, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But, but also, I would say we're influenced by our, the photographers around us. Mm -hmm. So it's not. Um, there is a yeah. There is a representation. I, I get a little worried nowadays. I, I mean, just. In the sense, and I feel like maybe we're part of the problem in our office. I get a little worried when, let's say, the architects think that all that representation is the end in itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I, I do feel like we may have helped cause that. You have, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of. I don't. I, think, I don't feel comfortable with that. You've had some influence. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel comfortable in that. I just feel like it's. It can get lost. I do. I do want to focus on, even today, like for instance, the lecture, for instance, I, I'm explicitly talking about just, I wanted to focus on objects of things, physical things, mm -hmm. let's say. And, um, and some of those things are representational, but I, I'm more, that's where my head is at, at least at the moment. Can you talk about like the Miami facade, for example? Because, the, I mean, there is a kind of shift, let's say, between a model and that and the building and the way in which material is used um, in, in both, perhaps. Yeah, there's a kind of different, a different expertise, perhaps, or something. I, you know, we are, uh, we're just, we're, we're real architects nowadays. So, mm -hmm. like, we are dealing with hardcore construction problems and engineering and budgets and pro formas and so the difference between let's say for the, the, the facade in Miami um, I mean the one thing about that is it started off as a kind of exercise in playing with representation which is interesting to think about it's like you know it can't it came from all the software projects yep um, and playing with video game software and to make physics based as opposed to it's know, like the sprinkling of yeah the it's just like squares. watching these things fall and yeah, bump yeah. into each other and they make these let's say arrangements or mm -hmm. compositions um, so it's literally yeah you just you know just like it's raining squares and and circles and triangles and they're beautiful honestly. Yeah. they're like yeah, amazing yeah. to watch I love them still they're like they're hypnotic um, and then the problem is you do this and then you have to make a facade and then you know you have problems of like mm -hmm. steel mm -hmm. and like budget and they can only do so much and you have to figure out then how to how to clad it all and you have to fight to make we really wanted to make you know deep so you have to fight in a way because the client is losing you know you're it's losing a lot of space yeah, yeah. yeah so you have to kind of convince them that the it's worth it yeah somehow visually <laughs> um you know things like that that's it's, uh, most of the work is done. The, the video, I mean, the software takes a lo took a long time to produce. So it takes like, let's say, two months or something to make the software. Okay. To do it, it takes like five seconds to do like the sprinkling of the thing. It's, <laughs> then you freeze the frame. You freeze it. Like this, this one, I guess. Let's do this one. You know, you can pick it. It just, it also, you want it to look kind of like it's unstable or something. Yeah, you want yeah, it to look, a, there's a sort of aesthetic in those things. You could click it and it was like perfect grid, then we'd say, no, no, we don't, we don't want that one. Um, so the, and then you've got to go through the whole process of engineering, the cost thing, the whatever, the back and forth with clients. That particular project wasn't that bad because we were really just designers, which was a luxury. A lot of times we're like the architects of you record. You get somebody on the ground. like Yeah, there's another architect who's yeah, the architect yeah. of record. And so okay. we get to be like, we don't want to use that caulk color or something like this for the caulking, you know, whatever. We don't want to use, um, you know, this marble is not the right marble. We give them grain directions, so we can just be outsiders, like critics. 
to the sort of luxury? Um, I wonder about, um, you said critics. Uh, I guess there is the representation, there is the building. There's also the teaching. I mean, both you and Hillary are full-time teachers. Yeah. Um, what influence does teaching have on your practice? What, what influence does your practice have on teaching? How does it all work? Um, that's a good question, and I don't really know the answer. I, I wouldn't say... It's a we terrible don't, question. It's broad. I, it's, I, no, no, it's know, fine. It's a good question <laughs> in the sense that I don't have an answer. Like the... Um, assuming good questions are the ones without answers, I don't know. But like the... Um, I don't have an answer because I don't... I think it has aligned with, let's say, interests. So, you know, you have certain interests or topics of discussion and teaching is a way to, to discuss them with a group of people and, you know, with students, but also your colleagues, um, and to make evaluations about them. There's that side of it. So there's a kind of world of ideas that teaching is involved in, which I think is important. And I think all of us who do this are kind of inevitably very self-conscious architects. And mm -hmm. you're writing about your work, you're thinking about it, you're talking about it. You have to defend it with kind of your, you know, a critical group of people. And, um, um, but in terms of like method of working, I don't really teach methods. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but do you teach methods? I don't know. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, I think it has maybe, it depends, yeah. like core versus not core. And there is this interest lately to maybe formalize core or maybe informalize it now again. I'm not sure. Yeah. But I, I guess my, if, if you're working through an interest in representation, there will be a very clear idea of how to parallel this to pedagogy. If you're moving into yeah. an interest toward building, and buildings come with all kinds too. of, yeah. so what kind of pedagogy comes out of that, or, or does it not, or does it not align? I mean, I've always you, wished, it, it, no, I think it's not a either or kind of scenario. I mean, it could be, but in our case it's not. I, I'm more interested in it not being an either or scenario. I have always thought like, you know, at least in the US, we're, you know, we're incredibly, uh, you know, we, we're much more anxious and question what architecture is more than most places. Other places are much more clear cut. I feel like if you go to Switzerland, they know exactly what architecture is and it's, and it's, you know, clear, there's a kind of very clear, like, you know, you have to know how to build things. In the US, we, we are not, um, that doesn't seem to be the main problem. I, I do think it's a problem that it's not discussed a, enough. Well, I feel like we've, we relegate the tectonics and the building to like some other vocational thing, which I think is problematic. At the same time, for whatever reason, we also, which is exciting, we're obsessed with like meaning, representation, um, kind of extra doses of self-consciousness in the work, I mean, uh, you know, you don't find most architects don't write. I mean, we write a lot more in the U.S. I feel like about mm -hmm. architecture and our own work. The exhibit you just uh, put together at Princeton, the low resolution houses. Yeah, it kind of um, maybe speaks to this a little bit in that when I saw the picture, yeah. I thought it was a rendering because it's all the models are white. Yeah, they're kind of low resolution the way they're built yeah. against the black paper. Yeah. Curtain. And, yeah, then, curtain, and then there's like yeah. a pile of ruins of material. Yeah, physical um, material. Yeah. Can you talk about it? I mean, it, it's neither. It's it doesn't look like any of the models you'd build at Moss. Yeah. It's kind of the extreme of both building and massing, or. I, I think it relates to the models we build at some level, but it's still, sure. yeah. I mm -hmm. we do we work in paper a lot, okay. and we ha we have actually always. I mean, I'm, like even like the the element house. But like stuff. the kind of whiteness of it. Oh, the white, yeah, sure. I mean? Well, we try to do, someone told me, another, a colleague of mine said, they, he was saying, it, he also said it was like a funereal. <laughs> it was like the death of the house. Um, both of which I thought were great. I mean, I, I thought they were, that was a good, those were good readings. I mean, low, low res versus high res, I thought, I do think we're in real need for like new um, uh, ways to, 
to compare and evaluate work nowadays, everything floats independent, and there's very few people like throwing out, um, let's say, metrics to evaluate things or compare. And so, let's say, low versus high is a classic old one. But if you change it to like low resolution versus high resolution, I think like some of the architects who I would put in like the high res category. I don't think they would mind being in the high-res category. And the ones who are in the low-res category wouldn't mind being in the low-res category in a way, because it just becomes a clear way to break things up. And I think, um, and you can start to compare things. It doesn't become, I mean, it polit it's political in some sense, but it's not, it's more of a way just to create evaluation of things. And so low-res for me were like, you know, architects like, um, who are interested in things that elements that look like house elements. So I had like three categories. Like the houses had elements that were like house-like. Let's say two, they had like kind of a roughness or construct, like they had to kind of uh, express their kind of construction themselves, like kind of like a joints and it wasn't about smooth, uh, smoothness or seamlessness. It was kind of rougher or cheaper construction. Uh, and then third, it was things like that we're dealing with, let's say non-compositional, or more abstract geometries, like, like mm -hmm. in their plans and sections, like squares and circles. That was the three categories. They don't, not everybody fits into all three of them, but some people overlap, some are one or the other. So I, I made some criteria like that, and then invited a lot of people, probably erred on the side. I wanted it to be like, yeah, I mean, I, younger offices, if anything. Do you think culturally things have changed in the last 10 years? I mean, the, the oh youth meaning- Oh my god, meaning, they change yeah, every yeah. time, they change like every, couple of years I feel like um, I don't know but I do think things are, are changing all the time <laughs> radically I mean I was thinking like when you know we were talking about like when you were a student and or when I was a student there were like when you were a student you know the, it was the kind of when you were my that, teacher yes when I was your teacher I was a student. yeah I was like one of my that was my first year at teaching yeah, it was, there. yeah. and like um, the that, that makes me my, one of your first students yeah <laughs> Yeah, especially at the GSD for sure. And then mm -hmm. with, um, but like, you know, it was the parametrics, it was a kind of, still a kind of formalism based in complexity, in a kind of old school idea of complexity, which is, is what it's a lot of NURBS and a, mm -hmm. or a lot of hyper things, kind of the, the kind of, uh, kind of winding down of a kind of 90s project. And the, and you know, and, and that was the discourse. It really was about kind of systems of logic. I remember I was telling the story. I guess um, maybe he was helping you guys work on the PS One proposal. Yeah. Not the one that got built, yeah, the but the one, one one of the reject yeah. re rejects. Yeah, the rejects. Um, yeah. And uh, it's inflatable, but yeah. it had to be scripted to be. Yeah. Quite carefully constructed, right? And then yeah. apparently you deflated the whole model yeah. overnight. Yeah. And the whole thing just kind of sagged. Yeah, we wanted it to be wrinkly and. Sad. Yeah. I think at the time when we started, we were we were in that model a little bit. We've moved out. I mean, if I was like trying to think about our own trajectory of our own work a little bit, it would be like, I think we started out, and I'm still sympathetic. By the way, I'm not. I have a sympathy for that kind of stuff at some level sure. still. Yeah, yeah. So it's like we start off like thinking about. Uh, let's say the parametric and things like this, and you know, and we were trying to use the most advanced. We were doing Katia right, right, right. stuff. We were working in this advanced software just to, and then trying to undermine it all. Yeah, so the yeah, whole thing was like yeah, you yeah. had to work with it, and then you had to like mess it up. It looked like it yeah, looked but it's, it should look it's, like stupid. Like even like the PS One, we did one with the fur, the the primitive is yeah, with yeah. The thatch. I mean, it was very conscious that we were doing the thatch to like undermine. The, the systematic logic, Cones, yeah. which is like, which is, right. which is there, and, um, uh, and try to like play with this kind of primitive, you know, uh, aesthetic, let's say, mixed with a kind of high-tech aesthetic. Yeah. I think since then we've moved, we've kind of, because we started off in that kind of place, and I think we mo we've moved towards like um, dumber and dumber things in a way, like, since then. I, I mean, I don't know if it's, I think that's true. I mean, like, we were conscious of it, though. Like I was saying, like, you know, it's like all white renderings and we, sh like, do deal with night shots. Like, even when, like, all the stuff, like, I remember, uh, like, smart geometry was the thing, like, the thing everyone talked about, or kind of, uh, 
sort of uh, parametric tetrahedral packing or something like this. That's why we did like rainbow vomit project. We would do, we did it like just cubes. We were like, let's do dumb geometry mm -hmm. as opposed to smart geometry. And we would just, and then we just throw them into with physics, like with, and we also wanted to find ways, you know, I was tortured by someone like who I, who I really like and is a good, great teacher and friend is like Scott Cohen. But I was tortured by him as a faculty member in some ways because he occupied, he sucked up a lot of air in the room. And so, you know, it was like, I was like, we've got to find another way outside this geometry problem always. Mm -hmm. So it was like video game physics seemed mm -hmm. like a way out, you know. And I, I think part of that, I think part of all of us like doing is like, it's just a search for how to create a kind of a voice in the field somehow, especially when it feels like really full. That's the, yeah. the best time. Maybe it's because Americans are always talking. Like, I just, I don't know if it's coming as much from yeah. um, other places where there's a little bit more building, but. Yeah, um, we also don't have as many opportunities, I feel like. Yeah, sure, I get it. Yeah. Um, but it, it seems also that, you know, there's talking, writing, scripting, there's all kinds of text that enters the yeah. production process. It's a lot of writing. It's a lot of writing. No matter what, you're, you're mostly your medium is is the medium. I don't know. You right. write a lot. You write a lot, even if it's scripting. Oh my! Or like, I feel like we write way too much. Mostly I mean, text. I'm like, yeah. I'm. I feel like I'm spending all my time writing. So you're photographing and writing. I mean, that those are the two main things that. I can't. I'm so tired I of writing. But I feel like we're writing all the time. Um, the, <laughs> um, yeah, and we do. We produce. You know, I feel like we produce a lot of books. Even is part of the mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. you want to kill? I don't know yeah. if I asked yeah, for everything. You did ask everything. Um, like oh the yeah. If you're writing a lot, what are you what are you reading these days? I was just saying I'm really into this book. Um, I wish I had a, could read more, but mm. I really like this uh, this book, Attention, by Joshua mm. Cohen. It's like um, just came out, right? Just came out, and I, I think it's like kind of like the hot book, but I don't know. Um, and I, I've been really thinking about attention versus distraction architecture. Mm -hmm. That's kind of something I was gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna talk about tonight in the lecture, but I was. What does it mean in architecture? Forms of attention. Yeah, forms of attention and mm -hmm. versus forms of distraction. Mm -hmm. What does that mean in architecture exactly? And I think for for him, the attention versus distraction thing is really about, at least as I read it, is like attention is really about, let's say, reading. It's also with attention. There's there's a question of, like you have to you can't you bracket things out when you pay attention to things. Like it's not about everything. Attention also is a kind of loss of the world in place. So the. Whereas distraction is maybe a more of a kind of, uh, you know, tr everything all at once model or something. It's kind of like trying to take it all in. And so, like, what would attention be in architecture? And I do think it has to do with how do we want to, how should we read architecture nowadays? How do we construct reading without it becoming, let's say, close reading or some previous models of formalism? Or maybe it should be that again, I don't know, but how do we read architecture? How would we pay attention to it? Because I do. I feel like it's a free for all at the moment. I could. I could be wrong, but it's like it feels that way in schools. That it's like there's everything goes. People don't even know how to talk or compare or analyze or discuss differences. Clearly, it's just like it all. It's all okay. I mean, it's like cool or not cool. It's like or not like. It's popular or not popular. I mean, those are kind of models of distraction somehow still. Is close reading, I mean, if formal analysis can be established probably in a library with a really nice scanner and a pencil, well, I mean, do, do you mean like going and literally cropping out information, zooming in on a built object, like uh, looking very carefully at stuff? No, like, I mean like in, like, old, like an old school model. I, I, I'm definitely not suggesting this away. I'm hoping there's new models. I don't want to say that we need to do this. But like the, the, the thing I would say is um, like, you know, plan making, there was, there's a whole history of look at how do you compose plans? How do you deal with games of centering, symmetry and asymmetry? 
you know, uh, geometry, how to, like, people hiding squares inside of squares inside of whatever, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to making things seem like they're rotating in plans. I mean, these are all old school games of comp compositional games um, of architecture that were really through, through a plan driven architecture. I don't think we have the plan. I, I still think in plan probably a lot, but it's like it doesn't, it's not the same thing anymore. We don't teach it like that. So, like, what are new, what are new ways right. to read architecture? I mean, I guess what you're suggesting is if a lot of the plans that you also are drawn to, at least in the low res house exhibit, are non compositional, as you yeah. say, like then there's a kind of illegibility already present, which is to say that it makes close reading very difficult. I, well, yeah. I mean, formal analysis works as long as you imagine an author and a, and a kind of legibility behind every yeah. work of architecture. And here, yeah, I think even non-composition is not like no composition. Let's okay. say, I don't think it's no composition versus a lot of composition. It just means like it it seems less composed. So let's say, um, I'm trying to think of a house in the exhibition. Let's say someone like Office or Gears, like the solo house thing. I mean, it's a, it's a, or even like Pezzo, Vano, we were talking mm -hmm. about. Like they, you know, there's there's games there that are trying to make it seem really dumb to mm -hmm. some degree, not unsophisticated. But if you look closely, there's lots of sophistication in little ways. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like it's not it's not um, it's not bro the broke in some cases for mm -hmm. me. It's like you know subtle small mannerisms perhaps in in um, you know just like one thing is off there is impossible to have no composition I feel like everything is composed at some level but just some things seem less composed I think composition is a cultural project it's not like a scientific project so it just it's a constant reevaluation and we just walked across the street to Hausnerworth and we walked past a development next door that said Oh yeah, life like art. What does it say? Life he makes art. Yeah, what does it say? Art. Yeah, art. Not art for. Art, art for creates life, life art or something. Creates life or something like uh -huh. this or Move art. In. Art creates life. Yeah, or something like this. So that's what you mean, like where it's just so yeah. easy for these kinds of big statements to actually be totally. I don't know if I'm exactly. Yeah, it does. It well for sure that does. But I mean like that is like we were saying like there's what did you say Ranciere at the time we were like yeah, oh yeah, yeah there's Ranciere oh, yeah, now yeah, yeah, yeah. Ranciere is an advertisement. Um, I think that's right. I think Rontiere can become an advertisement, mm -hmm. and then someone else has to come along and... I mean, the thing which is hard is that it happens at such a pace nowadays. Like, what do we do? That's why I feel like um, reading and attention is a way out, and I think attention also has a kind of tedium to it. It may require us to become... to, to not be afraid of the tedium and boredom of architecture and get less caught up in the thrill of it. But I don't, I don't know. Michael, on that note, thank you so much. Thank it was you. A pleasure. Thank you.